A while back, I purchased Vector Styler as an alternative to Illustrator and Affinity Designer. At the time, it was version 0.7, and in the meantime, it has gotten quite a few updates, and we are at version 1.2. In this video, I'll share the top features I like in Vector Styler. Let's kick off with two options I like in the settings of Vector Styler. The first setting is the ability to custom scale the user interface. I think every program should have this option. If you're working with HD monitors, things can get small and having the ability to scale the interface is definitely a plus. Besides scaling, you also have the option to change the fonts used in the user interface. The second setting I like are the performance settings, especially if you have a beefy graphics card. In Windows, you can choose from NVIDIA, CUDA or OpenCL. As you can see, there are many other customization options in the settings and it is quite powerful. A nice feature is that you can also save and load your settings. Now that we have seen the settings, let's check some other nice features in the application. One feature I like are the variables or values. You can set custom values which you can link to different properties or objects. By using variables, you can quickly experiment with your design. A nice addition is that you can also use expressions with variables. Pretty awesome. On my Mac, I still use paint code regularly because of variables, especially when you're creating icons. Sadly, the development of paint code has stalled and hopefully Vector Styler can fill this gap. Vector Styler also allows mesh gradients like Inkscape, which I really miss in Affinity Designer. The mesh gradient is a cool way of creating interesting looks. Besides creating gradients using a mesh, you can also create masks with a mesh gradient. Another feature I definitely miss in Affinity Designer is the Blend tool. Using the Blend tool, you can have two objects blend into each other. To demonstrate the blend action, let's add a rectangle and a circle. I can select both of them and apply the blend action. You can customize the blend steps, but also how the blend should take place. We can even use the control key modifier to change the path of blending, which is quite cool. Another cool feature is that we can even modify the blend curve by opening up the options of the blend. The blend is also non-destructive, meaning I can always modify the blend options, but you can also change the positions and the colors of the objects. Pretty awesome. Vector Styler offers a range of non-destructive shape effects that can be applied directly to vector shapes. For example, I can add a waste warp effect to a shape. And because these effects are non-destructive, I can always go back into the shape effects properties to adjust or fine-tune them as needed. Vector Styler even allows you to stack multiple effects on a single shape really highlighting the flexibility and the power of shape effects in the software. Another feature I find super useful is the quick isolation mode. By holding the Alt key and hovering over objects in the layer panel, you can get an instant isolated view of the selected object, which is incredibly handy. You can also double click on an object to enter a full isolation mode letting you focus entirely on that one element without distractions. These are just a few cool features I wanted to share in this video. Overall, Vector Styler is an impressive tool, but I do feel it still has some quirks and occasional bugs. While I'll definitely keep using it, I don't see it replacing Affinity Photo or Designer as my main toolset. Affinity just runs more smoothly and its layer management feels much more intuitive. That said, if you are exploring alternatives to Designer or Illustrator, Vector Styler is definitely worth a look. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on more graphic and video editing tips. See you in the next video.